I want to talk to you about microdosing, baby. It's fabulous. I want to be honest with you. I was a person, I was a goody goody, very goody goody. I've never even tried like edible or microdosing or knew anything about PTHC until 2020. And I just, um, I, I felt like I missed the boat with marijuana and because everybody my age knew everything about it and had a very high tolerance, I just kind of felt like I didn't even know where to begin. Because when your body's never experienced some of this stuff, I was like, how do I, how do I enjoy this? So you probably heard about microdosing. If you search around a little bit on the internet, you find all sorts of people are microdosing to feel healthier and perform better. Our show today is sponsored by Microdose Gummies. Microdose Gummies deliver perfect entry-level doses of THC that help you feel just the right amount of good. I cannot tell you how important this is. Oh my God. I am a person who is, you know, I was a goody-goody. My body's not used to any sort of anything, really. So having entry level, like, like something I felt totally secure taking that I knew wasn't going to give me an undesirable experience. Wow. I mean, being able to microdose gave me a complete safe entryway into the world of THC. And what is the point of being a dry queen who lives in California if I can't get into THC, mama? They really do taste and feel amazing. I've used them to help me get in the zone when I'm doing creative work. But honestly, I'm more about at night when I need to wind down, when I need to turn off Slack, turn off the emails and just like watch an episode of America's Next Top Model and just chill and go to sleep like a baby. It's a 10 out of 10 for me, baby. Microdose is available nationwide. To learn more about microdosing THC, just do a quick online search or go to microdosegummies.com and use the code BALL to get free shipping and 30% off your first order. Links can be found in the show description, but again, that's microdosegummies.com and code BALD. You guys, I'm so passionate about microdosing. It's, it's wonderful. I wish it had existed about 10 years ago. I love it. Baby, it is so freeing to get a fresh start and return to baseline. For example, decluttering your house, getting your inbox down to zero, purging your closet. Oh my God, decluttering your makeup. About twice a year, I declutter my makeup and I literally feel like a new person. It only takes me five seconds to get new makeup, uh, but decluttering is an important part of it. There's nothing more refreshing than hitting the reset button once in a while. If your hair is a little overdue for the same treatment, it's time for the clarifying detox shampoo from Way. Our hair goes through a lot, people. I remember when I was in beauty school, I mean, it's not just your hair, it's the way you treat it. It's the styling products that never get fully washed out of it. It's the way that your scalp constantly generates oil and collects residue from product. It's, I mean, it's your, your, your scalp and your hair is a magnet for stuff that shouldn't be there sometimes. Our hair can take a lot of experimentation and sometimes outright neglect. Okay. Listen, as a person who loves TikTok, I've seen a lot of hair dying procedures gone wrong, baby. But it's never too late to hit the reset button with clarifying detox shampoo from Way. I love the detox shampoo because something you don't know is that shampoo in general is also very important for your scalp. So even somebody like me who shaves their hair down to like nothing, your scalp still needs to be reset and cleaned. My scalp felt brand new, brand new scalp. Like I just took it home from the store and I love the smell. It has this signature fragrance that totally hides the smell of apple cider vinegar. It's kind of like a, a rose, a bergamot, a cedarwood. It's kind of witchy, but kind of masculine, but it's, it's gorgeous. When you're ready to undo some damage, hit the reset button with Way Detox Shampoo. Go to T-H-E-O-U-A-I, that's Way, O-U-A-I, dot com, and use the code BEAUTIFUL to get 15% off your entire purchase. That's T-H-E-O-U-A-I dot com, code BEAUTIFUL. See you at the shampoo bowl. Welcome to another riveting episode of The Bald and the Beautiful featuring Trix Mattel and Katya. Hi, I'm Katya, and we're so happy to welcome you back to another episode of The Pod. Yes! We're blessed. We're blessed to have you join us here on this recording on a Sunday night here remotely. Where are you reporting live from? I'm in sunny West Hollywood, California, um, where the weather is sunny, although it is uh, nighttime. Yeah, it's uh, I'm in Palm Springs. It's also nighttime. What's the temp? And, uh, What's the temp? What you got there temperature wise? It's chilly. As soon as the sun goes behind the mountains over here, What's it's the Palm Springs it's a wrap, chilly. Bitch. We got a we got a crisp and cool 53.0 Fahrenheit. <laughs> Let's see. Let's see. The people have a right to know sure weeks do. after us recording this what and the weather is in a city they don't I want to know. Listen, I want to know. I want to know. 
I want to know what 53 is in Celsius. Let's check it out. I have so many right. cities scheduled. Like, like, oh, six, it's 67. 67. Oh, my God. Hot. Oh, my God. I know. I stepped I out to go standing. for a little walk, and as soon as the sun... As soon as the sun went down, I was like, I'm going home. Yeah. I was just in Palm Springs. Can we talk about that? Yeah. Yeah. We let's let's address the <clears throat> elephant. Let's let's address the situation. Let's open up the notes app. Okay. Let's start the apology video. You got COVID, bitch. Oh you got, well, before you got that. Kobe Smith McPhee. Kobe Smith McPhee. I know, and I did something brave that no celebrity's ever done, which is not tell people on the <laughs> internet. I did it because right. you know. I think that's yeah. I, I wasn't going to say anything, but now, but now, and now you said it. Well, listen. So now we're here. My one of my so my favorite this Russian um, singer that I follow. She posted just uh, the the test result from the thingy, and I thought it was a pregnancy test because I couldn't, you know, I couldn't read the Russian. I had to translate it, and I was like, "She's pregnant. My God, she's thirty nine. That's great." No, it was just positive for COVID. And then she was apologizing for she's thirty nine. You should have been like, at that age, it could be really dangerous to carry. You should have said, "You should try to help." We were born in the same year, and we're the same height. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Also, so you think that you could get pregnant too? Oh, I know. I know I could. Um, I would do a surrogate, whatever. Um, not to change the subject, we'd go back to your very your illness, but um, Svetlana Labadaher, Kirsten Dunst, um, and uh, she was born the day before me, and Jamie Dornan, Fifty Shades of Grey, Barb and Star, who? Belfast. I don't yeah, know who that um, is. Northern Irish hunk, actor, model, lovely. Same age as me. Oh, same exact yes, yes, age. Yes. Same exact age. May 1st, 1982. Why do I look 70, wow. David? David, I look 70. Girl. Put me in a walker, I can't, even, I, can't, I can't even discuss it. I can't even discuss it. Because I haven't done drag in like nine days, I have this like little... I can't even situation. say your, little, your, your situation is very pixelated. So the three chin hairs you've grown in, I can't even see them. Well, I, yeah, I, 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 it's funny how minimal facial hair I have to get for people who are attracted to men to treat me completely differently. <laughs> it's made me think, is anybody hot or do they just have hair on their face? No, oh, no, 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 no. Case in point. I get, this, this, I get literally uh, Mel Gibson and Symes a couple crop circles. <laughs> and people, and are, like, people are like, oh, you've got a good. dick. <laughs> Slide in the DMs. <laughs> Bitch, Violet, Violet and Got Meek called me from the uk tonight they called me at like by the way 6 p.m which is probably 4 a.m 3 a.m yeah. there so they were a little turntina turned yeah. at the game <laughs> turntina and uh they uh violet was like oh my god why are you hot why are you hot like interrogating me why are you hot which is like you know and then she's like i just can't look at your face anymore i'm getting horny and then she hung up oh that's weird i was like made that could have been yeah. a read but also that sounds like that's probably that sounds like her dating tactic like her um her, it's always a read because it's never you look great no it's like it's why why it's do you look my good head. for once why am i attracted to you you're supposed to be fucking silly putty with googly eyes you bald fat bitch and anytime anybody remotely doesn't wince when they see me they're like why am i feeling this way why do you look good it's it's so rude it, 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 it makes you me know, feel so horrible it, that's so funny <laughs> it is so because when you are like when you are a public figure celebrity whatever who's not known for their sex appeal, let's say. <laughs> um, yes. But, and, and you are like middle of the road, like that. those kind of backhanded compliments like pop up all the time when you get a picture of yourself that looks really good. It's like, why am I attracted to this? Wow. Like, it's like, why do I feel this so subtly? Why yeah. do I suddenly... Yeah. Why, I don't know. I guess I'm attracted to again, shit It's against now, all bags odds, shit. really. There's no... <laughs> Yeah. Um, why am I jerking off to a pile of turds? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, anyways, so that's good for you and your chin hairs. Um, so you have you got COVID and um, yeah, it, I didn't. It, and I don't want to give away crazy. too much, but I got COVID at a very inopportune time. Probably. Let's just say that. I would say I would say it's like the comic timing is almost it's it's past absurd. It's past like slapstick. It's it's almost like <laughs> it's almost like um, I don't know. It's like some kind of like biblical girl. Biblical. It Mary. was almost. I didn't. To be honest, I cried a little bit. But I don't. I can't say what I missed, but or I can't say what I was sick for. But I was. I was sick at a time where I really needed to be somewhere, and I could like the go. Oscars. And like you were nominated for, it, for an Oscars. Academy Award. It was award. the 2012 Oscars. Yeah, you were nominated yeah. for an Academy Award front runner, and you won. Yeah, but you got COVID you. and couldn't I, go. 
<laughs> I know, I know. So I, I, I'm waking up. Um, I feel I thought it was allergies. Uh, usually in Palm Springs, it's getting warm here, and usually when it gets warm, I, I start getting sniffles. When it gets that warm there, year. Warm in Palm the Springs. allergies. Oh my god, the dander, um, the pollen. <laughs> <laughs> So I wake up, I put on my running outfit, I'm ready to go for my little run, I'm stepping out, I get a call from the nurse, and she says, your test is positive. And I go, what? And I have to You're like, for HIV? All the people up... I I, I wish. I don't wish. (laughs) I would have. In that moment, that would have affected me less. (laughs) Yeah, I know. I would have gone for pregnancy, anything, because this was the thing that would keep me from doing what I had to do that day, which fucking sucked. And I hate to be vague. Yeah. Vague. Hate to be vague. But, you can't just say what you um, are. But you know what? Um, you and I, uh, but you and I had just filmed a few days beforehand. Just and filmed. I fully breathed in your face. Breathed in my and face. I guess you didn't get fingered it. Fingered my pussy with uh, blood um, transfusion. Bit in the hand. Yeah. And um, and we filmed together. We were in the same airspace and the and it was hanging out for a good good while. So I was like, oh, I ha- I definitely have it. Eden has it. There's no chance. There's no question. And then um, yeah. uh, go take a rapid when I got home. Which, uh, you know, that's like Which unreliable. Is mean, kind of meaningless. I'm sorry. It's unreliable. Like, I rapid also, that quickly, too. You know what I mean? That quickly, it's unreliable. So then I got a PCR a couple of days later. Negative. I think technically, perhaps there's still a chance, but uh, I was like, uh, <clears throat> so random. I mean, I'm on a set every day where everyone gets tested every day. Yeah. And then not even my boyfriend, who I sleep face to face with every night, got it. Can I ask you a personal so question? Random. Did you lick and suck on his face huh. like a kiss? Did you kiss him like kissy kissy? We literally had unprotected anal sex days beforehand. No COVID. Oh, I know what happened. Did I say anal? I, I meant oral. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> yeah, it was. It was anal, oral, and kissing on the mouth. When you say I, unprotected, you know what he said in the middle. He said, "Why are you hot? <laughs> um, why are you hot right now? <laughs> why am I fuck? attracted to you? Has hell become an ice skating rink? This is fucking crazy. Yeah. <laughs> In what universe would anyone ever have any feelings for you, you disgusting bitch? You should kill yourself. Wait a minute. Um, Water is wet. You're ugly. What's going on? <laughs> yeah. Okay. I don't want to like, you know what? Whatever. We all have feelings about ourselves. And, Do we? Um, I don't. I sometimes don't feel great about myself. <laughs> but recently there's a couple TikTokers who... Uh, do kind of look like me. I look like oh, them a yeah, little bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not just being white and bald, but we, we kind of look alike. Mm. Enough to where when they make their TikToks that say, um, people are constantly saying, you at, they like stitch it saying like, you are you look like Atrix and Mattel. Yeah. And then the I, I made the mistake of looking at the comments. Oh no, don't you ever. <gasps> don't you ever, ever, So ever. their TikTok is like, you guys say I look like Trixie. The comments are, are, they're nasty I and was rude. never meant to I was never meant to see these comments it was like they're like you, you look like Trixie if she got a completely face work done and started working out no you do not you're way hotter I, it's like these people are way hotter and so that doesn't really bother me but I was like I should have never no looked. that's why you never, never ever ever do it the only one I've got which is actually I'm going to show you a picture it's um are you familiar with Brian Eno if you, if you fucking if you pull up no Brian Eno oh my god no oh I thought you were going to pull up like a no no oh you 100% look like this person yeah Brian Eno in the 70s yeah and so now I know how I look like when I get older you know god willing um, he, cause he's, well, he looks great in that picture and he looks great now. Like this is him. I believe that's him. Is he a model? I'm going to be him. Is. Sorry. I can't, can't say. Is he a model? No, he's a, he's an, he's a, a musician. He's very, very like uh, electronic musician. Really. Um, he's gorgeous. Well that, and, yeah, and, yeah, like picture. ambient, um, known for his ambient masterpieces. Anyways. Um, wow. Yeah. Oh, well, um, I forget what story I was telling. Okay. So then I'm, I get, oh, I get sick. And then I'm, I've been in this, this room at the Margaritaville in Palm Springs for, <laughs> since, since about 9 a.m. Like last a Saturday, cheeseburger so in paradise. Like <laughs> waiting down uh, a river. I'm like a, I'm like a hurricane relief victim. Oh. Look what Brandon, Brandon, Brandon's so afraid of getting COVID. He knocked on my door. And when I opened it, these were sitting outside. Oh my God. Really? Cause he's so, so Amen, tomorrow I, I have it. another, t- I have a test. Tomorrow I have a test and, uh. If I test negative, I'm I'm cool to I guess continue living. But if I test positive, I have to cancel my college gig on Tuesday. Oh fuck, which is in two days. Mama, fuck that shit. Don't worry about it. Don't but worry this about is it. A, this. This will be my second time canceling because the last time I had a COVID scare last time. 
Well, we're in a global, so like bad this is a global pandemic. So, you know, I know, but, uh, because so many people make money off of me going to work that day, oh, I know, I, know, I, know, I, I felt know. bad for how many problems it created yes. for everyone else. That's what I was feeling it's like not yeah. me staying home from my, you know, it's not a snow day. It's at, not a snow um, day. Yeah, or if I still worked at a restaurant or something like that, I would be like, okay, well, I lose the money, but whatever. This is more like you own the restaurant. It costs. Yeah, money. yeah. I don't want to be gauche, but the tens of thousands of dollars. Oh, you're being lost yet. because of this. Yeah, is not. It's not the fantasy. All right, Lehman Brothers, let's go. <laughs> it's not the fantasy. Yeah. Well, I never know what to. Add. I never, I never know if we're supposed to acknowledge that we make good money, or is it more gauche to pretend like you uh, are more comfortable no. than probably a lot of people? It's. I think that it's. It's just. It's the. It's. It's not. It's not gauche to acknowledge it. It's. It's how we describe it, and and because it's all relative. Like when you use words like good, when you use words like rich, comfortable, they don't mean anything necessarily. Because ask somebody who lives on Park Avenue, comfortable. Is having a, a exactly, you know I mean? and by the way, by drag queen standards, well, that's I was comfortable when I was making four or five hundred dollars a week. I felt yeah, rich. You do so like yeah. If I had more than all, a thousand dollars, I personally, I was telling I don't know who. Oh, this lovely um, porn person. I was I was at a party the other night. I'll tell you that in a minute. But um, uh, I was like when I had ten thousand dollars in one place in cash, like in the bank, I felt absolutely rich. Rich. Yeah, really. Yeah. I mean, a hundred percent. I remember right after college, I forget why, but I came into $2,000 and I remember seeing $2,000 in my bank account being like, yeah, balling. <laughs> I could quit working <laughs> and yes. be okay for well, my rent. <laughs> when I first started, when I first did drag race, my rent was 400 a month. I had two roommates and it was 400 each, $1,200. And I remember booking my first gig that was a $1,200 pay and being like, can I work four times a year? <laughs> I remember being like, well, well my first apartment was two fifty a month. Uh, no, that's my last. Well, yeah, I had I had one that was two eighty five. When, when did I you think have back to do? of how small it was, yeah, three of us lived in a, uh, a like a furnished attic with like this tall ceiling wow. over here. And I remember flowers in the attic, two hundred eighty five dollars a month, and I, I loved it. I would rather live in squalor and like comfortably make my rent. Do you know what I mean? I was always like, as long as I can in a weekend make my rent and not have to worry, I'll, I'm yeah. fine having like. Small space, you know. Yeah. I slept on a mattress on the floor, whatever. You know what I don't like? I, I, I hate it when people shame people for not having a bed frame. As a person who did not have a bed frame for many years. <laughs> um, I, I don't want to be gross. I slept on a futon mattress on the floor until I was probably 25 years old. That's not gross. It's until just... I, until, I think Drag Race was the reason I first got like a real bed. Yeah. Drag Race, she gives. Keeps, baby. Listen, I have been bald slash losing my hair since I was probably 16 years old. I've been looking in the mirror at a receding hairline since I was 16 years old. I've tried a lot of different things. I have processed things a lot of different ways and kind of found out what, for me, bald works for me. But I think everybody should have every option and tool available for them. I think hair loss treatment should be easier to access. Prescription medication should be delivered at home. I mean, there should be so many easier ways for people to explore their options. And there is with Keeps. Two out of three men will experience a form of hair loss by the time they're 35. I think Katya and I are two of those three men. Keeps has more five-star reviews than any of its competitors. And there's a reason why. Keeps offers simple, affordable, and stress-free ways to keep your hair. With convenient virtual doctor consultations and medications delivered straight to your door every three months, you don't have to leave your house. Low cost, treatments are just $10 a month and Keeps offers generic versions of two FDA-approved medications to prevent hair loss and 24-hour care and support. Keeps has a network of expert medical advisors, prescribers, and care specialists to support you in keeping your hair goals a reality. Keeps has everything your hair needs, delivered straight to your door with discreet packaging and proven results, baby. Remember, prevention's key. Hair is a lot easier to keep than to regrow. Treatments take four to six months to see results, so act fast. When it comes to your hair, save more and spend less. If you're ready to take action and prevent hair loss, go to keeps.com slash bald to receive your first month of treatment for free. That's keeps.com, K-E-E-P-S dot com slash bald to get your first month free. K-E-E-P-S dot com slash bald, baby. It's a new year, which means it's time to leave behind the things that don't serve you, like overdraft fees. When your checking account balance is running low, the last thing you need is an overdraft fee. 
but with Chime, an award-winning app and debit card, you can save that hard-earned paper without paying overdraft fees. Eligible members can overdraft up to $200 on debit card purchases and cash withdrawals with absolutely no overdraft fees. Listen, I can speak from personal experience. When I was in college and I had $1 and, you know, $1 and 35 cents to my name and the bank would charge me $25 a day, it, it just, it's a nightmare and it can snowball into something really, really terrible. And so Chime has got you covered. What I love about Chime is that it saves you from the stress of getting further and further into debt because that can be just soul crushing and horrible and painful and overwhelming and terrible. Make your first good decision in 2022 and join over 10 million people using Chime. Sign up takes only two minutes and doesn't affect your credit score. Get started at chime.com slash bald. That's chime.com slash bald. Banking services provided by and debit card issued by the Bancorp Bank or Stride Bank and a member's FDIC. Eligibility requirements and overdraft limits apply. Overdraft only applies to debit card purchases and cash withdrawals. Limit starts at $20 and may be increased up to $200 by Chime. See Chime.com slash spot me. Hi guys. Listen, I'm a drag queen, which means that I often wear gorgeous, stunning, show-stopping ladies' clothes. But I'm pretty casual in my day-to-day -day life, and it's rare that I have a formal event to go to. But when I do, such as a wedding or a bar mitzvah, I need to dress up and I usually need to wear a suit, you know, just like RuPaul. That's why I use Indochino. They make it so easy for me to pick the material I want, the exact measurements, I can customize the whole thing. It's incredible, I can get shirts, suits, even casual wear, all at a surprisingly affordable price. I ordered an incredibly custom fitted tailored suit in teal, which I know sounds a little flamboyant, and my brother ordered one in burgundy, which sounds even weirder because he's straight, but the point is, they are fantastic. I absolutely love the suit that I got from Indochino. It is fabulous. It fits. It's it's just fantastic. You can get a wardrobe personalized to your style and taste without spending a fortune. Every piece is made to your exact measurements, and you can customize every detail. The best part, Indochino suits start from just $429 and shirts from $79. This season, dress to impress on every occasion with Indochino. Get $50 off any purchase of $399 or more by using promo code BALD at Indochino.com. That's $50 off a purchase of $399 or more at I-N-D-O-C-H-I-N-O dot com promo code BALD. But anyway, I just um, so anyway, yeah, you're in Margaritaville. <laughs> she gives and she and she ate. <laughs> she this ate. Older, yeah, so I went at the Margarita before, and I've never. I'm not a TV or movie watcher, really. Uh -huh. um, I've never Lies, seen so much okay. TV or film as I have in the last eight days. Yeah, what are you I've watching? watched both Suicide Squad movies, Birds of Prey. Uh -huh. All three of those. All three Batman's. Uh, the Dark Knight uh, Dark, trilogy. Uh, Dark Knight, Dark Knight Rises, and the Bat Batman Begins. I never seen any of them really. Get into okay, they were well, good. I a little, I, yeah. little serious and a little long. Oh. They're grim and protracted. Yes. There's not a, nary a, <laughs> a joke. David, nary a joke. Nary a lighthearted no, moment. No. Nary a lighthearted um, moment. Yeah. David Silver, his first job on a movie was Batman Begins, and he's a PA on that movie. And so I watched it to see his name in the credits. Like He's like a production assistant, David Silver. Awesome. And, but I was like, 30 minutes in, I was like, this is really serious. He's yeah. like, yeah. And I'm like, it feels like it hasn't really even started yet. He's like, no, no it hasn't. Yeah. I was like, oh shit. Yeah. Those movies are also like two and a half hours or something. Mary, two and a, Christopher Nolan loves a three hour jaunt. Like I watched Interstellar. I had to do it in three days. Matthew McConaughey flying through yeah. a black hole. I was like, it was crazy. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. I, that's how I feel in every long movie. I feel like that Judge Judy meme of her yes, life. Yes, exactly. Yeah. At the theater. Yes, always. Think about people at the theater. At the theater. Because I don't leave the seat. Girl, and they got if you. Leave, Once you're in the theater, too, they got you. Oh, yeah. I don't leave, if I'm leaving the seat, I'm leaving the theater. Please, I don't leave girl, to go to the bathroom. I'll pee my pants before I get up. <laughs> I was soaked that movie theater chair. It was, kind of, a, it was kind of a Margot Robbie marathon, too, because I found I watched I, Tanya again. Oh, God. Love. Mary, I'll never get sick of that movie. If I could, I've seen it probably 10 times. I love her. I love her face. I love her body. I love her mind. I love her everything she says. I love everything she does. I love her feet. Everything about her. You know what's brave about her? And I talked about this on the Substack this week. What? She's Margot Robbie. Beautiful, cultured, well-spoken, mm. perfect everything. Mm. Yet she makes a living being not Margot Robbie. If I looked like Margot Robbie, I'd be like, I'm cool. Staying in this persona. <laughs> yeah. Thank you all. Yeah. Honey. I'm cool being Margot Robbie. Perfect. Don't need a tune-up. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> right. Yeah. No. You and I, thank God we're cross-dressing. Uh. Jesus Christ. Yeah. I, <laughs> that's my future. You see her? <laughs> Girl. Show she, them. Oh. Actually, anybody who follows you has probably seen it on your Instagram that's true. recently. Oh, my new my one. My boyfriend texts me, what is that face? <gasps> my new one. So the one I, <gasps> I told you, the, 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 oh, did I show you? I didn't show no, you. Is it, the, the, no, is this new merch? The, Are you wearing new merch? Oh, yeah. Is this cute? Oh, that's yeah. so cool. I love oh. it. Luke Marsh oh, did I it. I love that. Yeah, he did a great job, Luke Marsh. I had some I had copious that's notes and it took a long time to edit. But um, did I show you my new like plastic surgery face thing? I'll do it no, with I'll do it the second pod because it, it, it's so sweaty and gross. But um, it, Okay. Um, so I watched um, I, Tanya, b- both Birds of Prey, or the Birds of Prey, both Suicide Squads. Is, is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Did you like did the, you see Suicide Squads? I, I saw the, um, yes, I saw the second one. The with, second one's unbelievable. The second one, fabulous. So good. That, the the um the scene where she busts through the police station with all the confetti and the flowers. I was like, love. But, sorry, a kid. I just Intruder? heard a kid running down Intruder? the hallway. Oh, when I, well, I just that watched a documentary though. with Lisa Ling about sexual predators. What? <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I know. I just I I never knew what happens to sexual predators where they have to live to not be by children. I didn't really know about oh, that. Like, yeah. They have maps with bubbles mama. of like, well, you have to get an apartment here because you can't go over here. Pariah, social Crazy. pariah. And get this, this is not, I, listen, the, I'm not defending pedos in any way, of course. But I had a friend who on was got turned Tina and was pissing outside, happened to be by school at night. He got nabbed, got, got indecent exposure in a school zone, sex offender. Well, I mean, he was a whole other conversation. Of a child, but it was, you know, it was just like he's. But, <laughs> no, it's a whole, di- whole different conversation. Was, let's the keep child it light. Loved it. Yeah, <laughs> let's keep it light. <laughs> well, no, I just think after watching the Lisa Ling documentary, which is about the extent of my knowledge, <laughs> I do feel that it's probably a form of, you know, uh, mental unwellness, and there's it's maladaptive behavior that is. It's a mental. Yeah. Mental illness. It's a mental illness that the the system doesn't seem interested in rehabilitating helping with <laughs> as much as like yeah, go over there. Also, don't come over. You know what I mean? Yes, I do, and that is also indicative of the general attitude towards mental illness in general. Like it's like <laughs> well, right. just put, you know, and put of course jail. the victim too. I'm like, well, a lot of the the molesters were victims themselves, so yeah. then it's like, well, that also tells you that the victim doesn't get help. And then they become a you know offender. So, yeah, and it's like perpetuating it's cycle, cyclical and crazy. Did you see there's Spotlight? No, there's no right answer. Speaking of light fair, did you see Spotlight, Mary? No. Oh, what God. is it? It's it's a documentary, or it's, it's sorry, it's a drama based on the whole um, uh, Boston Church scandal in two, the 2000, early 2000. Amy Adams, Michael Keaton, no. um, uh, Mark Ruffalo, fucking riveting. And I was there, living in there while it all shook down. Mama, they she knocked well, on the they door. They love to fuck them kids. She knocked on the door of a priest and uh, to interview a journalist, and she said, "Hi, I'm I'm just you know wondering about these allegations of you. Uh, you know, you did did you go? He's like, yeah, I touched the kids, and she was like, what? Like she couldn't believe that he admitted it right out. He's like, yeah, but it happened to me. You know, it, it was just I didn't enjoy it. I don't enjoy it, but it's you know it just happened to me. He was like this really crazy, like Frank. Um, and, and it was just so fucking crazy. That mo- that movie fucking. Up. Well, it makes you wonder. And then, did you watch the documentary about the archdiocese in Baltimore? Oh no, I, I didn't see where they the would Baltimore catch went. the they would catch the person fucking the kids, and then they would move them to another church. Yeah, that's what they did with, yeah, they do in Boston too. And yeah. then they would just move around to different zip codes and fuck yep. all them kids. And the Pope knows, and and now all the 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 tax cr- free, mama, tax free. Get into this. Get into this. Someone told me, and this is just hearsay. This is all gossip. The clergy bitch in Italy, honey. They turn sex the kids out. Parties, cardinals, sex partina, sex partina, P and P with the Lord. Yeah, it's like crazy. Mm. P and P with the Holy Spirit. Do you know what? They, okay, here it's P and P. Did I tell you what they call P and P in the UK? Oh, it's um, uh, Heitch and height. Oh, high and horny, high and horny. Hitch and mm-hmm. hitch. Hitch and hitch. But no HIV. <laughs> um, H also, not H. can you host? Can you accommodate? Can you accommodate? accommodate. I love that. So formal. I love that. Can a calm? A calm. I was like, calm. What the fuck is that? 
yeah, accommodate. Can you accommodate? I'm like, can you accommodate some H and H? H H H R H. I also, um, you know, I love YouTube is my first love. I don't really watch a lot of television, but I watch a lot of YouTube. And I was catching up on clips of Celebrity Big Brother, where some of our friends are currently on it. Carson Kressley, Tadrick Hall. (laughs) 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 Mama! Some things should not be said whilst being recorded. (laughs) I would never do that. I don't think that that is an easy gig i think you want to talk trauma i think people could really bring their trauma in lash out on television and leave with more trauma doing oh, that. of course hello me. tell it to someone who knows me but at least on drag race or whatever there's like structure there's competition. There's competition it's a it's a it's there's a something show. to do they're yeah. just in there boiling until they snap on each other yeah they're, they're raw shrimp in a pot can i ask a dumb question do the other religions fuck kids do they uh, like their priests that's really, and stuff fuck kids I, I, you know, I don't think, I, I, you know, I don't know. I know there is abuse even within B- Buddhism, you know, who you would, you would kind of, I, you would assume perhaps that maybe there, like, there's nothing wrong, you know, nothing weird's going on there. Of course there is. I think there's any, get any group of men together and, and give them any power, there's something going wrong. But like, I, I, yeah. I'm not sure, I'm, I'm sure, I'm not sure what the statistics are because the, the, that religion, Catholicism in particular, is set up for denial, secrets. Um, uh, you know what I mean? It's like it creates this like judgment, I mean, cel- celibacy, Gossip. and yeah, like it's just it creates it's such a perfect environment for um, to groom and, and um, uh, you know abuse people. Horrible. Plus, the upper the upper crusts of these religions are all men, and ninety nine percent of men of or ninety nine percent of uh, rapists are men. Yeah, and why can't like there's so many Christian denominations that are that allow people to marry. Rabbis can marry, right? And they can be men and women. Yeah, and have like marry. Uh, uh-huh. get to get a grip. I never know. I, well, I always I don't know. I always feel bad for. I feel I I I, I get. Of course, I don't like religious things, uh-huh. but I feel bad for people who are in religions because I know a lot of times they're raised that way or like. Yeah. Like, do you know how many Scientologists are like raised Scientologists? A lot of, of them. I and mean, then it's like, of course, we can all shit on some actress who like become Scientologist. But what about the ones who grew up Scientologists? It's like, well, what else? They yeah. don't know anybody else. They don't know anything yeah. else. I know. I mean, my friend so grew up like Jehovah's Witness, Witness it, but, and he had to escape. That's yeah. a cult. A cult. Yeah. But a lot of people Jehovah's do Jehovah's isn't on another level. Ma- no, I, I had a gay friend in Milwaukee who it's a cult. had to, at, like, he came out at like 30 gone. and he just yeah. had this never talked to his family ever again, basically. Yeah. It's so crazy. I had, I left Catholicism in a very like, uh, like a, uh, but it was a, it was a runaway uh, bride situation. It was in the middle yeah. of your wedding yeah. and you, at the altar, you said, ah, uh, and you ran. Yeah. And I ran, I ripped off my, um, my, um, my, uh, wedding gown halfway down the aisle and people were like, are you sure? You're so sexy. I'll marry you. And I said, no. Well, you were kind of doing like Jennifer Lopez. You were like, Marry you were me, like marry you. Me, will you it. marry me? And they're like, and the, no. Like, wow. <laughs> and then you got married. Yeah. Wow, a drag queen. I guess I'll marry you, but I'm not yeah. going from eight to three. I'm a man. I tried to watch Marry Me, bitch, and it's um. Let's girl, just say, wait, you know there, no, 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 no. There is there is a hysterical part that you would cackle at. One, um, first of all, Sarah Silverman was actually really great in it, and um, so oh, she's she great goes, in everything. So. Uh, Jennifer Lopez, they're reclining at home. Nobody's around. It's a private moment. It's just her and she and Owen Wilson. And she goes to do this. And I'm like, instinctually, like, she's going to take off a wig. She's going to take off a wig. She pulls off a track, literally this, and like, takes off a track. Out. Like, I was like, like, I mean. But do they <laughs> think that, I mean, people, this is de-dragging. Was this supposed to be funny? Like, well, they made this weird joke, and then he was like stepped on it, like it was a bug. I don't know what the hell they were trying to do, but it's like, why would you take off one track? Oh, it's like, oh god, that track was killing me. Now I can relax. <laughs> so, meanwhile, she's a full drag beat on, and in one of crisp oh, yeah. white linens, it's like crazy. And she does look perfect, but she yeah. does wear a lot of makeup, which I love. And get this though, this is the ultimate fucking gag. Want to talk about uh, bald and beautiful? She's the same age as Sarah fucking Silverman. 
Sarah yeah, Silverman I mean, is Sarah Silverman. 50 fucking two, I believe. Ageless. I love Sarah Silverman. Me too. If I nobody listens that. to the Sarah Silverman podcast who listens to this, you should. I'm just going to check. She talks quick. to herself on that podcast and she's so interesting and funny. She's I great. just love her. She's 51. Jesus is magic. Love. Yeah, I love I love it. Uh, the Sarah Silverman program. I love it. I gobbled it off. So so Sarah great. Silverman program. Yeah. I, um, I love her. I saw her with your boyfriend at Largo and it was such a great fucking show. So that's great. right. Oh, that was the show where she said, do you, what, do you believe in God? And the guy was like, yeah, yeah would, you, said, would you let God cut me in your mouth? I was shocked. Um, he said no. And I was like, you're not a real Christian then. Mama, if no, I believe you, in God and Jesus, Christian. I would guzzle down the fucking ropey, nasty fucking amber stone flecked jizz. Girl, chunky tom all in my mouth. And then I'm like, oh, 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 oh. girl. Speaking of, like, now that I have these antibodies, girl, I will be spread open in an intersection <laughs> and just on Hollywood Boulevard. It, it just, I'm going to have so many fucking dicks and cocks in my mouth, my eye sockets. <laughs> I'm going to cut holes in my stomach and let people fuck like a, uh, just anywhere. <laughs> you should just anywhere. start antibiotics right now. <laughs> just the brain anywhere. <laughs> you know what's better than an ad break? A beach break. And I know we could all use a getaway right about now. When I want to book a beach vacation, I use CheapCaribbean.com. I'm all about that all-inclusive life. I get more food, more drinks, and more fun for less money with less worries. Basically, I get more of what I want and less of what I don't. Cheap Caribbean has great deals on incredible all-inclusive beach vacations throughout the Caribbean, Central America, and Mexico, including Cancun, Jamaica, Los Cabos, Punta Cana, Aruba, and more. Book today and get a next-level beach vacation at any RIU hotels and resorts in the Caribbean, Mexico, and Central America. Less money, less worries, more beach when you book at CheapCaribbean.com. I would absolutely love to go to Jamaica, or anywhere in the Caribbean, really. I just want to be on the beach, in the shade, in the water, with a little drinky, in a little sand, in a little sun, and cheap Caribbean, it's the way to book it. Less money, less worries, more beach when you book at CheapCaribbean.com. This podcast is sponsored by BetterHelp Online Therapy. Relationships take work. Okay, a lot of us will drop anything to go help someone we care about. We'll go out of our way to treat other people well. So why don't we give ourselves the same treatment? Hi, I'm Trix Mattel, and I can tell you firsthand that I have sometimes dumped a lot more energy into work or my obligations to, to others or performing or whatever, or, you know, eating pizza and passing out drunk. You know, we all have our unhealthy behaviors. This isn't about me, okay? But I know for me, I often need to go stop. You're not taking care of yourself. You're not checking in. And if you're not taking care of your home base and your brain and your body, everything spirals. Everything spiders out and spirals. This month, BetterHelp Online Therapy wants to remind you to take care of your most important relationship, the one you have with yourself. Whether it's hitting the gym, making time for a haircut, or even trying therapy, you are your greatest asset. So invest the time and effort into yourself like you do for other people. I know for me, being able to just talk, being able to just vent, talk, touch base, bond, being able to just say your stresses and anxieties and have someone go, girl, T, that is everything. BetterHelp is online therapy that offers video, phone, and even live chat sessions with your therapist. So you don't have to see anyone on camera if you don't want to. Um, we, don't all, we all have bad hair days. I mean, I'm bald, so that doesn't happen, but many of us have bad hair days and we want to talk about ourselves, but not be on camera. It's much more affordable than in-person therapy, and you can be matched in under 48 hours. Give it a try and see what over 2 million people who've used BetterHelp Online Therapy are excited about. This podcast is sponsored by BetterHelp and The Bald and the Beautiful with Trixie Mattel and Katya. And listeners get 10% off their first month at BetterHelp.com slash bald. That's B-E-T-T-E-R-H-E-L-P dot com slash bald. I'm Trixie Mattel. I love you. And I'm here to remind you, we have to look out for ourselves. And BetterHelp is here to help better. Oh, can I tell you that I, um, speaking of sex, I didn't have it. However, <laughs> oh, well, I didn't have it. But <laughs> let me ask you this. Let me ask you this. <laughs> Great story. <laughs> no, listen. Let me ask you this. Though. So there was, I was uh, hanging outside my studio, smoking a bud, whatever. And this boy comes along and he's this um, a white dude, probably in his like late 20s, I don't know. 
And he was with um, an older gentleman, maybe in his 40s, uh, clearly gay. And uh, he does like a stop, double take. And then he's like, wait a minute, Katya? And he recognizes me and he comes and approaches me and says hi. And we chit chat. And he's the whole time he's like this. He's like, he like kind of can't believe it's me. Like he's like kind of visibly like, and he uh-huh. says it. It's not awkward because he's very cute. Um, and I'm just sitting there smoking. I'm like, I don't really know what to say. I'm kind of tired. And then she's outside your house, outside the studio on the sidewalk. Oh, okay. Um, and so, and I was like, you know, da, 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 we chit chat, chit chat, chit chat. And I'm like, I should have, I should have said, you're very attractive. Uh, what's your Instagram? You're with the older man. Were they together or no? I don't know. I don't know. I should have asked. This is what know. I'm asking you. Should I ask, like, hey, I, like, what's your Instagram? Because he probably follows me, and I'll just follow him back. And then that's where I could start a potential romantic overture, or whatever. Do you, th- you think that that would be the most uh, appropriate? Okay. The 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 friend like piece PC answer here is like, girl, go. No, Shoot no, 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 shot, no, 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 no. I don't want. But that. the real T is: Are what? you okay with fucking someone who might only fuck you because you're a famous person? Well, here's the thing: when I noticed the can, the booty. I said maybe. Then you okay. <laughs> okay, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Because he probably it? is, it sounds like based on what you're saying, that yeah. he's out of your league, other yeah. than he, he likes your work. So then he is attracted to um, you, which does on happen. On my best day, absolutely. On my best day, like me looking my best, I wouldn't say that he's too far out of my league. Perhaps maybe like a, a notch or two, like a number above. No, no, no. Okay. It's, it's all relative, you know. How because, old is he though? I, th- I would guesstimate him at around 27, 28. You think that you're one number below somebody who's 10 years younger than you? Wisdom, Is that what Mama? you think? Does wisdom not factor into this? <laughs> <laughs> wisdom? Which, wisdom? Which wing do you name wisdom? <laughs> when I, no, this no, is my wig, no, wisdom. No, this is the wisdom that man the black and wisdom. <laughs> I don't know. Um, but, so what would you could have... You know, I, I find because that I don't want to manipulate them in the moment because I know that they're starstruck. You can get away with anything, kind of. And also, I didn't know if that was his boyfriend or his daddy. I don't know. I don't know if star. What is starstruck? Like no, star stunned. Being attracted was, to your energy because he likes your sense of humor and likes your work doesn't mean if you sleep with him, you're a rapist. No, 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 all the situations where it's been soft sisters of flaccid trade limb, you know, um, like those kind of those moments have all occurred because I've, I've been my like direct, perhaps on the spectrum type of dating, like, um, pickup style. And, and, and I think that they are too, they're not in their right mind in a way because they're like, they wouldn't honestly tell me how they felt. Do you know what I mean? Like, Can I ask when you have these uncomfortable pickup moments, which I'm I've not, witnessed, I'm not uncomfortable. Um, but <laughs> well, the way you sort of cut to the feeling, as the pop stars would say, <laughs> um, is it because it's easier to be wantonly bizarre about it than it is to be earnest and actually try to shoot your shot eloquently? Um, I'm not sure because I don't. I'm. I'm is it I, is, I, is it weird for you to go like talking to him and go? Oh, yeah. And then, like, try to do it with, like, body language and eye contact. Or does it only work for you if you go, I would like to have sex with you? Do you know what I mean? I mean, that's just the most direct approach I've found. One is definitely direct. (laughs) One has, like, a finesse, though, that allows sort of a courting, which then lets you, like, mutually get interested. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which I think, like, but here's the thing. It's one-sided. He knows I. he's interested in me. He finds me interesting. I want to know, does he want to fuck me? Sexually? No, no, no. Oh, okay, yeah. I, uh, you I know, know what? Right away, reach out to I him. want to fuck him. I don't know if he's right. interesting, though. You know what I mean? You could, if he's not interested in you, but you still are okay with having him as a friend, then maybe it's worth trying to, like, no, reach out to no, him bitch, or I, ain't I got plenty of friends. Lovely friends. A Rolodex. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's, what that girl, Look, I mean, right that's, there, when somebody her? says to you me. see her? Her, the, her, right there? She's not friendly, yeah. but she's my friend. <laughs> That's, that's liberty or whatever. Wisdom. That's wisdom. <laughs> the wisdom. <laughs> that's liberty. That's chastity. Right. Behind. That's wisdom. <laughs> yeah. yeah. When somebody says to me, when I try to like come on to someone and they're like, yeah, or we can just hang out. I, you're like, it. it's a wrap. I don't need, I, I have like two and a half friends and I don't even like yeah, them. No. <laughs> like, 
<laughs> I'm cool. You're like, hang out with cool you. Is it, is it paid? Is it paid? Why else I have a partner? So I'm like, oh. no, we're not going to get fucking dinner or some shit. No. Yeah, no. I don't need to like, I don't need to like giggle and like, no. Nah. Like, no, we don't. <laughs> it's, 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 I'm not a giggler. I'm cool. I'm not a giggler. I'm not I'm, here to yeah, giggle. I don't need to put I'm on my, my petticoat and sort of like my, my sponge rollers the night before. Like, I don't want to go through all that. <laughs> We could go to brunch. But you know what? I wish you would have said like, um, oh, this is actually my studio. And then you could have maybe invited him inside and tried to start a conversation. Oh, are you fucking out of your mind? Invite a drag fan into, a, into my studio? I'll never get him out. Like that would be the opposite of sexy too. He'd be like, I'm going to try on a wig and then I'm going to, and then I'm going to just kill him. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Well, if you sleep with a fan, they also don't leave usually. I don't, I don't know if you know that. Oh no! I, 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 they leave. I'll push them right out the door. You try to kick them out. Yeah, absolutely. You just shine some daylight on yourself. No qualms about like that. Roaches. Yeah, I'm like, I, yeah, I pull the curtains and they're like, ah, they just run. Um, yeah. But wait, wait, wait! I have to. Um, I want to talk about my uh, Bjork story. I don't know if we have time. Can I tell my Bjork story? Yeah. So, yes. Okay. <laughs> so, um, it must have been a couple weeks ago. I went to see Bjork. At the um, at the mm -hmm. a theater down uh, downtown, lovely theater, lovely theater. Hungry, the makeup artist, you know, hungry. She got us tick free yes, tickets. Yes, we just had her on the channel, and I was like, "What are you doing here?" And she was like, "I'm doing makeup for Bjork." Mary, what she do on your channel? I guess I'll find out. Um, uh, we got ready together, and I had to tell her. I said, "I love you. I think take your it? art is amazing." I said, "We can't be here longer than three hours." We can't be filming for longer no. than three hours because I've I've heard that she takes a long time and I was like we can't be doing all that. Well, she doesn't do. She's not game. doing a. Face. I can't hand my editor four hours of footage to edit or I, I would know. be shot. Yeah, 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 yeah. Also, I would fall asleep. But yeah, her, she, but she, but she looked great. The look was great. So how was the yeah. show? The sh Mary, the fucking show was phenomenal. I was worried. I has I was like, oh god, you know, it's going to be a stand up thing. I'm so I don't I don't like to stand up. I haven't been to a concert, music concert in forever. Um, and uh, it's, I mean, from start to finish, bitch, this motherfucking show was like perfect, exquisite, show-stopping. And to be perfectly honest, I have not even listened to her last like few albums, but I, I was a, I'm a huge fan. The staging, the production, the, it was the, the video elements off the chain the car i mean it was just off the chain i can't go on and on and on and on and on started out with a local choir um local um like a choir from la these um a bunch of people for say 20 of them cry immediately i start crying immediately i start crying and like really yeah, immediately start crying because it's very moving it's was like it beautiful a, a beautiful and then bjork of course is wearing a, a crazy dress but she's got her tits pulled up very sexy because sometimes she wears like just a, a cocoon or whatever and um she was amazing and then I'm going to just like, I'm going to cut to the chase, cut to the real chase. <laughs> cut, so, to the, <laughs> cut to the chase. Yeah. So concert was amazing. Loved it. Perfect fucking length. Perfect fucking length. And I didn't get bored. My attention didn't waver for a fucking millisecond. That's never happened since like 96 or whatever. And like, so. Uh, was we, her voice really cool in real life? Her singing? Yes. It was great. It was great. And wow. she, I mean, girl, they had a whole, they had a hula hoop flute that was played by four people. They had like a septet of flutists from Iceland who were fucking fierce. They were battling flutes. It was like they had a guy playing the water bowl. Have you ever seen? Have you ever seen the Bjork um, unplugged MTV unplugged? I don't know. It's her singing, surrounded by I'm not kidding, at least a hundred world and in, world music instruments, mm -hmm. drums, a, bones, yeah, how yeah, bo gourds, yeah, yeah, bones, and people yeah. are just going in. Yeah, they had a and fish people love it. It's so yeah. great. She was great. It's great. I it honestly, like, like I said, I, I knew, I recognized, like the songs I know, I know all the words. I've you know listened to them forever, but half of the material I wasn't familiar with. It doesn't matter. It was just so gorgeous. Everything together was just like fucking stunning. And there was this um little pussy palace, little a cocoon where she would go in, and it, it was just like, anyways. So at the end of the show, um, Hungry had said, you know, stick around because um. You know, you know, you, there's maybe an after party where you can uh, meet Bjork. And I was like, okay. Um, and so we stuck around and the, the plans were shifting. And, and I was like, ah, you know, I, we should just leave. I don't want to be like weird. So we get in the car to go and Hungry's like, I was like, sorry, I left. Please tell her I love her. She, uh, he's like, what? You left? Come back. 
Bjork will be so sad. And I was like, okay. So I was like, we went right back. Girl, we went in there. We walked in there. I'm like, a heart's I meet, I meet her. We talk. She says the most wonderful things about me and you that is like, I, I mean, she said, you have no idea how much you and Trixie mean to me. I've watched every episode of Aunt. It got me through the pandemic. I'm like, it's fuck. I was like, I was like, <laughs> And her daughter, I mean, her daughter's a fan. I mean, it's a huge deal, like crazy. We hung out the, the, for like an hour. And like, and I meet her, the uh, Jeremy Scott was there. It was all the, it was, you know, it was just the most magical end cap to a most magical night. I was like shitting all over myself. Feces on the floor, on the walls. It was incredible. She was I, so nice and beautiful. Uh, was, I bet un- she's un- so yeah. gorgeous in person. She is and I was like I'm you know I'm like all up in her grill and she's uh, her it, she's so she's like Janet from another planet she's Janet from another planet she's I, just I mean, she has something. such a great beautiful voice and yeah. um I was doing some YouTube YouTube research on her listening to her play and like bands she was in before she was a solo artist and yeah her voice is just so commanding and beautiful and bananas yeah. and her hair and her face and eye shape yeah her eyebrows like everything about the way her her skin and structure works together. Yeah. You're like, are you a supermodel or a little girl? Skin. She's a she's an old little girl, crazy lady, alien lady, like a uh, moss witch. And she I just looks, she watches. Uh, she sure fucking does. And drag race and like and she know. I mean, she knows like she is. And then I got a text the next day. A text Did message. She texted you from Bjork. <laughs> Wait, does she know that you did her on Drag Race? Yeah, yeah, of course. That well, uh, at, during Drag Con, her daughter came to my line and then Facetimed with me with her, and I almost shipped. Yeah, she was like, "I'm Bjork star." I was like, "Fuck!" I was like, "Fuck you!" You know, you're not. And then she pulled up Facetime with Bjork on it, and I like died. I was like, eh. "I love I'm Bjork star." You're like, "Me too." I, I literally was like, "Oh, fuck off!" I was just like 17 years old. Um, <laughs> but yeah, it was that crazy. is so I crazy. Have to show, yeah, I don't know if it's like um, I, I don't want to read it. But I just it said, always. So funny. So many celebrity style people watch uh, and I always just wonder how how I'm like how. I mean, I understand that it's free on YouTube and and drag has a huge presence, but anytime it's not like let's I be know. honest, most of our most most of the people who watch our things are under a certain age. But see, I don't well, yeah, a, or a great number of them are, but I don't know because but like where where does a, a literal cultural icon is she stumbling through youtube one day and she's like oh, oh this right. looks cool i think so i think i think probably her daughter told, probably got like you know because they watch drag race and then oh, they that's found, probably you, you know what i mean but i'm telling you there's like i have and I, I pete and um jeff and ron need to know this of course which i told them but like that is what a fucking what a goddamn i mean compliment. it's such a compliment uh, it so, would, somebody with her mind and her 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 vision, visionary, and like, innovative. And she and, even gets she even gets a chuckle out of us. Yeah, makes yeah, my day. Yeah. Oh my god. She, and it's funny because I I respect her so much. I don't love all of her music, and and she's the kind of artist that I don't think you don't love all of it. You know what I mean? Because she's so experimental and she takes a lot of risks. She does a lot of weird shit, and like um. But so that's what I I'm just like oh god, I I she's has a music career that is so enviable, I think. Were you just glowing? Was your face like... I, I was just like... And I, I, I was just like... I, I told her every... I mean, I just like... I said, I love you so much. And I told her, I was like... I did the fan thing. I was like, when I was 17 years old, I was listening to Come To Me from debut and blue Christmas lights in my room, like pining over a boy for three days straight. And it's like, you know, and she's like... I mean, I've been listening to her since 95... And then probably listen yeah. from ninety five to two thousand whatever, and I kind of dropped off it around like Volnicura, I think. But like you know, oh, it was just so. It was so. That's it. I, I can't imagine I anybody having moments matter. like that because Julie Roberts if, I, between a uh, artist and a fan interaction, ninety nine percent of the time, I would say you and I are on the the artist side of it. Yeah, and so it's fun, not fun. It's humbling and reminding when I meet somebody where I can't even talk. And then I'm like, well, that's why people sometimes can't talk when they meet. Absolutely. It's a chain reaction of you meet someone and then you can't talk. Yeah. And I'm like, because Bjork could meet someone and be like, oh my God. Well, I almost didn't even go. That's why how nervous I was. I was like, I didn't want to impose. I didn't want to be weird. I didn't want to be like the the weirdo on the periphery. 
when what she um hungry marched me right over to her she was talking to someone she turned around i was like she's not gonna recognize me and she just smiled and it was like and i was like oh Oh, wow. It was crazy. And chatted with me for I a long that. time. The, a long time. We crazy. had, um, on my next record, maybe this is the, I don't think I've told anybody, but uh, on my next record, I have a duet with Michelle Branch. And making a song with her was for, was for me like, were you nervous? I couldn't even connect. I just couldn't even connect that this is, this is the person's the reason I started playing guitar when I was like 13. I'm making a song with that person. And I had to just like, how do I talk to this person and not make it weird? Right. right. You have to turn right. off the front you can't of your be brain too that casual remembers too. like, yeah. Cause you sometimes right. people are out of nervousness. They, they're too casual and chummy right away. It's like, no, no, but you can't, I don't know. It's tough. It's weird. It's a, and it makes me empathetic to like, I mean, people meet on tour yeah. this year. People will meet us every single day and meet and greets are scary ironically i had a meet and greet with michelle branch in 2016 this is after drag race i bought a meet and greet for michelle branch one ticket front row in anaheim at the house of blues with meet and greet for me to go by myself what did you say to her did you say to her i was gonna go and i chickened out and didn't go you're kidding i didn't i got scared and didn't go i was like i can't do this I want one one homosexual weirdo in the front row being like, I came by myself to see you. I was just like, yes. you can't do that. Oh, and you then for certainly can. I still haven't told her that like one time I bought a ticket and didn't go. You didn't. <laughs> <laughs> no, because I'm trying to keep it casual. Right, right. You just yeah. need to know that. Yeah, you're like, hey, bitch. <laughs> what, <laughs> what would you say when you, so what's your, when you meet a Bjork or the next time you meet a, like someone like that, what's your yeah. strategy going in? Do you say, I'm just going to say this and keep it moving? Well, it, it right. It depends on the context. Cause like I, I, I saw Grace Connington on the street once I went up to her, said something brilliant. And I ran, you know, like easy hit, draw, uh, hit and run. And you ran. I did run hit and run, <laughs> but it was like, you know, love and run. Wow. Um, but I would, uh, it depends on the context. Cause like if there's like an after party, if you have a moment, a few moments to chat, um, you know, it, it all depends, but like, I, I don't think there's anything wrong with saying, I love you so much. I love, I've been so, I have all the stuff you've done has affected me so great. I'm so glad you exist. It's something up to that effect is not, that's a pretty good thing to hear. I feel like, or it's like in retail, they treat, they teach you to like, hi, I love your shoes. You like open with a compliment. Bjork probably likes her music too. So if you go, I love this music you do, then you're, yeah. it's almost like you start on a common ground. Hey, we have yeah. this thing in common. You make this, I love this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She invited me to the next after party the night after the next show, and I didn't go. I didn't go. Because well, I, I get that. I Maybe you don't want to do you know be what like, I mean? I'm back again. I, yeah, and yeah. It, was, it was at a, a fancy place in like the hills. It was at a house. This was at the venue. The first one was like in a bar at the venue, like when everybody left. This was like in a private res I don't know. I just felt like I, I would get nervous going to that kind of party anyway. And I, I, I like it could have been amazing. It probably was because she and everybody in her entourage are so sweet. So sweet. It's not like some not like a Madonna thing, you know, where you'd imagine everybody's like a cunt. Um, but uh I don't know. I just didn't want to push it. I wanted to have my memory, but I have her phone number. I get it. Yeah. I just did that. Uh, for Christmas, I did that fundraiser with um, Belinda Carlisle. Oh my God, Belinda Carlisle, and I just was like, "All right, we're just gonna make it through this." And we're she already knew I was a super fan, though, so it was like, okay. "All right, she already knows I love her music, whatever." So yeah. you just won't mention it. Yeah, but we were rehearsing to go on, and we were sitting in the office of the Abbey, and I, we were playing Vacation. I was playing for her, and she was sitting across from me singing, and I was like, "What is?" It was like I was. Like I was drunk, like the alcohol just hit. I was like, what is happening? It's crazy. Like, how are you sitting here looking me in the eye, singing this song uh, while I play it? Yeah. But sometimes you just have to go, you just have to, you just have to like, yeah. Nah. Yeah. <laughs> well, well, that was the bald and the beautiful. <laughs> what a weird episode. Yeah, but it was bald. And I think I'm, uh, somebody I'm sorry I started out uh, negative. I'm sorry I started negative about my COVID and my body and my yeah. face and negative about but here we are. You were negative and yet you're positive. Yeah. So. Hopefully not. I, my test is tomorrow. And if I wake up and it's positive, I have to call this college and say I can't come to my gig. Sorry to this college. <laughs> well, we'll find sorry out in another college. You know, these are college kids. They have nothing to live for. Yeah, no. Yeah. I'll see you in two weeks. Yeah.